Hi guys, it's Dom here from Esports News UK. Today I'm joined by a special guest, a different guest, uh, different from the usual kind of players and all going as we talk to. Uh, I've got someone from Intel with me, if you could introduce yourself. Yeah, hey Dom, I'm Steve Shakespeare. I look after retail for EMEA, for Intel. Okay, excellent. So tell us a bit about what you're doing here at EGX, first of all. You've got a good stand out there on the show floor? Yeah, we're, we're here to, um, to really kind of talk about how we're, uh, we're helping gamers have a great experience when they're playing their, when they're playing their games and, and, and when they're enabling eSport uh, activity. So uh, here to really talk about all the, the latest tech that's coming from uh, Intel and how we're working with the, uh, the hardware manufacturers to bring that to life uh, for gaming systems. Tell us a bit about the tech that's coming as well, because PC gaming, as everyone knows, it changes so fast. There's games like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds out there now, which are, are quite yeah. intensive, require a lot. What should gamers, uh, semi-pro and pro gamers, be aware of over the next few years if they're upgrading their PC? You've got some new processes on the way. Yeah, we have, and, and you know we're really excited about it. I, I mean, what I what I love about this industry it is so. Uh, tech hungry right? and everybody wants to take that and have the best gaming experience they can um, so I mean a couple of things actually we've uh, we uh, a couple of months ago we launched our very latest super high-end uh, gaming platform it's called Core i9 uh, and that takes you right the way up to 18 cores or 18 cores or that's 36 threads of computing power mm -hmm. enabling to, you to have kind of what we call mega tasking so the ability to not only play games that's record games it's great isn't it? <laughs> play games record games stream games on Twitch, share with your friends, communicate. You can do all of that on a platform. So you know that's right at the high end. So it's it's quite expensive stuff, but for the super high end experts, it's a great platform. Um, at the same time, uh, we've just announced our eighth generation core. So um, everyone's familiar with Core i3, Core i5, Core i7. Uh, good, better, best in terms of the best um, uh, PC platforms out there. Well, we've got. Um, We've just announced Core i5 and Core i7 on 8th gen for uh, notebooks, uh, so that's available now. That gives you up to 40% more computing power, meaning you can have up to 40% more performance for all those games you want to play. Uh, that comes on notebooks first, and then uh, we'll soon be announcing um, similar products on desktop uh, and actually for, for gaming, big gaming notebooks. So we're really excited about that. So imagine up to 40% more performance, meaning not only can you play your game on the highest settings, you can stream it on Twitch with your mates, and you can kind of really enjoy that experience. So we're here to kind of talk about that tech and really show what we're doing for, um, for the gaming enthusiasts out there. And that's, you mentioned Twitch, it's such a big part of the gaming world today. And you know, as someone that broadcasts interviews and discussion shows on Twitch, it eats into your processing power a lot. So I guess what you were saying, the mega tasking and everything, uh, is really important. You know, t tell us a bit about um, what people should look out for. Those who, who don't understand how it all works, Intel, you work with different partners. You know, different computer makers. What should people look out for? Well, yeah, I mean, we, we, we work. Yeah, great question. So we, we, I mean, we work with the whole industry, right? We work with all of the major uh, hardware manufacturers, and we also work with the, the smaller local guys, right? And, yeah. and what's important about that is we work with them so that they they can understand how how to take advantage of these latest chips because we make the chips and we make the chipsets that power it, but they have to bring it all together. I mean, we work with them to bring the best platforms to the to the market. You know, what I would say is we we, we try to simplify that with our branding. So I say, you know, the the thing to remember is, you know, the very best is Core i9, mm. which is very small market, high expensive, but great products. But the, really, for the mainstream, Core i7 is the best mainstream product, then Core i5, then Core i3. Uh, if, if you're on a budget, we've got Pentium or Celeron system. So that's the, the, the stack of processors. So I encourage people to look at that. Yeah. Obviously, if you're an enthusiast gamer, you want to have a great graphics capability. And depending on, again, your budget and your needs, um, you know, we have uh, integrated high, Intel high definition graphics for, if you like, mainstream. Uh, gaming, but if you are honestly, we recognise if you want the best, then you want discrete graphics, and we work with the discrete graphic vendors so that you can get the best of both worlds. Have a balanced system, a high performance CPU, and a great graphics card. That's what uh, that, well, that's what's going to give the best gaming experience. Definitely. And um, talking of tech as well, before we move on to uh, your thoughts on esports as a whole, VR is a it's still a hot topic. Um, some are saying has it delivered or not yet, you know, but it's, it's improving all the time. The tech's getting better to power those VR games and VR in esports as well. It could be something that's explored, you know, people are looking at. What are your views on VR as a tech? 
Do you know, I think, I think VR, we're just starting the journey on VR. It's really, really exciting. And you come here to EGX, you walk around, there's a load of games on VR yeah. being played here. You know, you kind of look out there in terms of the innovation. There's stacks of stuff going on. You know, we think there's at least, um, there's at least 2,000 VR games um, yeah, available for kind of streaming today. So, so we're enabling that, you know, to, to have a great VR experience. Uh, you, you need to have it smooth, right? So when you've got the headset on, you don't want it, you don't, you don't want it to stutter. Uh, otherwise, it can make you feel sick or ill. Um, so what that means is, yeah, you need a great graphics card and you need a great CPU. So again, you know, if you want the best uh, frame rate for VR, then really you need a Core i7 with a good graphics card to do that. Uh, and typically we think 90 hertz or 90 frames per second is what gives you smooth Frame, frame play. So, but rule of thumb, Core i7 gives you that. In, with some games, Core i5 will get it, but you start to go much lower than that, and, and it's a bit unsure. Um, that's for VR. That's games. for VR. That is for VR. To be clear. Um, so, if you want VR games, that's what you want to think about. But, it, but we're seeing some fantastic stuff. So, I think you know, here at EGX, we've got things like Battleground, Archangel that are out there as, as new games. So, I'm really excited about it. I think we're right at the start of uh, of the journey here, and it's coming to the mainstream, which is so exciting for everybody. Um, but it's coming into v, uh, into esports as well, Dominic. So, uh, you know, increasingly, I think uh, you, we're, we're going to start to see more and more VR gaming come into esports as people want to immerse themselves on that and I'm really excited and we're committed to continue to bring new technology to bring that to life um, for a great experience. Do you think it, what are your views on VR in esports as well as a viable sort of uh, uh, piece of technology because esports is historically keyboard mouse controllers a bit as well in the UK we're quite good at console games COD and FIFA and stuff like that do you think it can work? Do you think we're really going to have pro gamers playing this? Or do you think it will be something that's played competitively by people at home? Or both, maybe? You know, or is it too early to say? You know, it's quite a sweeping open question. Do, do you know, I think, um, I mean, obviously the interfaces are different, as you say. It's, mm. you, you're now going to have handheld devices. I mean, a couple of things. I think, um, you know, it, it's becoming more and more accessible for everybody. Mm. I think it brings a different dimension. I think the classic kind of approach for computer gaming is not going to go away. I think it's going to be added to with VR it's going to give another dimension and I think you're yeah. going to see VR eSport game leagues and activity yeah. um, and, and you know what's important if you're playing you know many people want to play gaming and they record it and they stream it on, on Twitch as we were saying um, you'll be able to do the same thing with VR but to do that not only do you need to capture what's on the screen you need to kind of put the player that's playing the game into the image and then stream that that requires even more compute capability um, but we'll be able to do that and broadcast it so you will be able to watch uh, VR head-to-head esport games um, you know, through Twitch because we'll be able to convey the whole image of what the player is seeing in their headset uh, uh, as part of that game. Is that sort of like mocap? Is that like mocap? Uh, motion capture, you know, where they put the different balls on you and are you saying you'd be able to put that person in the game, their exact movement? You'll be able to see the person in the game. We, we showed a demonstration at uh, IFA, the Berlin gaming yeah, event, yeah, just yeah, the other yeah. week and uh, we had a Core i9 18 core system there but it was but it was amazing we had this pro gamer mm. playing a VR game and it was recording that VR game and then it was rendering his image into oh, the VR yeah, game yeah, and then yeah, yeah. broadcasting That's it on the internet and it was fantastic yeah. so I, I think it's incredibly exciting again early early days mm. but you know that's, that's gonna come right yeah. is it gonna replace CSGO or uh, Starcraft yeah. uh, or League of Legends I don't think so. I think it's going to add to that and, and, and just make the make the, the whole esports activity even more exciting. Yeah, no, that's a good answer. And, and yeah. talking of esports, Intel have always been there um, since early on. Uh, Intel Extreme Masters, you do that every year at, at Katowice in Poland. You're a big supporter. You've worked with, like uh, I think, organisations like Team Dignitas and things over the years. What are, what are sort of Intel's views on esports? You know, where do you see it going? I guess in the next few years. So, I mean, esports e is a big deal for us. Mm. It's uh, you're right. We've worked with it for, for years. We've been working with the uh, the Intel Extreme Masters event for years, which uh, which com uh, culminates in the finals in uh, Katowice in Poland. Uh, I was there for that this year. Right, we had 170,000 people there in the in the uh, arena. Uh, to watch this game and it, and it was like a soccer game right you had the crowd going mad you had lots of cheering and shouting and, and the whole emotion behind it was brilliant uh, and we love that right and I think uh, you know what we want to do is we want to develop 
and bring our technology, the best technology we can, to the market to enable gamers and esport players to, to, to do their very best and to enjoy it and for it to be a sport that everybody can engage in and enjoy. So we're committed to that. We're committed to working with, the, um, uh, with ESL and the Internet Stream Masters event uh, and, and we're working with events you know, such as here at, uh, at EGX right? and we've got eSports events going on right now yeah. and, and competitive uh, competitions happening here so I think it's really cool, uh, we're going we're gonna to keep doing it, it's, it's a wonderful industry and I think it's just bringing a whole new dimension to, uh, to computing. Definitely and speaking of what you're doing here we've, got, we've had like lots of grassroots and semi-pro things here, the uh, ESL League of Legends Premiership uh, uh, playoffs, we've had Rainbow Six Siege stuff, Overwatch, lots of things going on. A lot of people, some people watching this will be thinking, uh, I'm a UK esports organisation or player, how do I get an Intel branded on my shirt? You know, are you guys supporting some of the grassroots UK teams or are you aiming at those higher level global teams still? Well, I mean, the way, the way we're investing, I mean, we're, we're, trying, we're investing in prize money and events, and obviously we encourage teams to come into that and participate uh, and join it. So really our approach is to sort of support the industry at large yeah, yeah. Um, and, and bring that to life, because I think you know, we want it to be accessible for everybody. Um, so that's kind of how we're doing that. And then um, we want to bring it to life here. So we're, we're, we're here, we've got our stand and our event here, and, and we're inviting people to come in and to play the games and experiencing the games. So that's really the approach that, that we're that we are taking on that um, our sponsorship if you will is is more around the uh, the, the gaming event per se uh, there are some teams around uh, around the world that we work with uh, and you know that's that's a that's a, a focused activity for us but I think the, the, the bigger picture is supporting the industry and obviously working with the hardware manufacturers so you'll see all of the hardware manufacturers uh, are here with platforms uh, that support great gaming experiences that's the impression I got actually because I think you guys do stuff with ESL Premiership I see when I watch the weekly matches yes, and everything yeah, you know do. so you're aiming for that ecosystem yes yeah uh, I guess yeah. and we want to help the we want to help the whole industry mm grow and develop that's really the, the focus yeah. on it definitely um, I guess that's co covered off quite a lot of interesting points there is there anything you want to add anything I might have missed about Intel what to look out for or, or views on esports anything like that yeah I, I think um, you know we are we're working with the industry at large I haven't talked about software we're working with the software vendors and you know one of the things that's important that is that software is designed so it can take advantage of the platform you know we, we touched on VR a little bit and you know when you look at VR there's kind of a couple of elements to it VR is um, there's there's what's called the physics engine that, that's what's calculating what happens so when a when a car blows up when it's shot and blows up in a game then when you look at that and you see the the, the bits of metal spraying around the screen and impacting other stuff that's called the physics you have to have this yeah. physics engine that calculates what's going to happen when it blows up and then what goes where well all that physics gets done by the CPU yeah, the CPU yeah. calculates that so that's why the Intel process is really important it calculates that we also do the processing on artificial intelligence what the logic is out there mm. and we do the processing on the sounds distribution to make it really immersive right. so all, all that, that stuff you don't think of when you're no, playing a game people, you shooting at you know, things and that's okay yeah. I don't want people to think about it what yeah, I want them yeah. to know is that they can trust that we've got a great platform yeah, yeah. so we do that but you've got to pair that with a great graphics card because the graphic card renders it it draws it on the screen yeah. so that the sum of the two is what is important have a great graphics card have a great CPU then you're going to have a great gaming experience. And um, yeah, that's, that's what we're committed to keep doing. That's something I was going to ask actually, these new i9 and processors you mentioned, when are they sort of coming out? Do you have any estimations? Yeah, no, they're, 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 yeah they, are, they are shipping now. Uh, there's, there's, it's a family. Um, it's uh, the Core X family of processors actually. Uh, it actually runs uh, yeah, all the way up. There's, there's actually a Core i5 X series processor right the way up to Core i9 new X ones. series. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, very, they're very new. So, so I think the 10 core, well, the, the 10 core product is shipping now. Yeah. The 18 core product is shipping this month. Okay. Uh, sorry, next month in October. Um, and, you know, that's what is uh, coming to market. But this stuff's going to be accessible for Christmas, holiday. Uh, for those people that want to look at it, please talk to your local, uh, your favourite uh, PC uh, gaming supplier online or in store and uh, talk to them about what they have. But uh, I'm aware that there are products coming from many of the hardware manufacturers into that space. And in terms of pricing, I don't know if you have that, it's probably too much to list. I'll probably try and put something in an article 
probably after be, yeah, this. probably best if you talk to the OEMs to get their prices because of course yeah. you know the, the 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 price of the product is the decision of the hardware manufacturer. Mm. But yeah, frankly, we it goes from hundreds of pounds up to several thousand pounds, uh, and it really does depend on what you want. Yeah. The important thing though is of this Dominic, you know, we've got systems at every price to support every budget uh, and to support your aspiration. And I think that's really important that yeah, eSports is, a, is, is, a, is, a, um, uh, is an experience for everyone. And yeah, I think we've got, a, we've got a solution that can afford, that, that you know, most people's wallets can afford. And if you, are, if you have the budget and you have the aspiration, then you, then you can get some, you know, some super, super products. Um, yeah, if, if you've got a, a more, uh, more reasonable investment, then you know, there's, a, there's a solution for you as well. Um, and, that, and that's what we want to support, right? I mean, in, in, get people into this and uh, enjoy what technology can do for them. Oh, sounds great. Thanks very much yeah, for talking to me. Yeah, thanks, Dominic. It's, it's, it's brilliant to be here, and uh, yeah, I'm thrilled about thrilled about the work we're doing together. Yeah, I look forward to seeing as well, like genuinely, what Intel does in the future of esports because things like IEM aren't small tournaments. You know, they're big deals. So it'd be interesting to see, like, sort of watch this space, see what happens watch this in space. the future. IEM 2018 is not that far away. We're looking no. forward to it. Okay, cool. Well, thanks yeah. very much All for right. your time, Steve. Steve. Cheers. Right. Cheers.